Well, good morning. Welcome on this uh, Father's Day uh, to everyone tuning in. And uh, dads and granddads, we hope you enjoyed that opening video. A little uh, clip for you. And but we do welcome uh, each and every one of you on this Father's Day Sunday morning. Welcome to General Shepherd Community Church. And also, let me say, happy summer. This is the second full day of summer. Summer started yesterday. So uh, happy summer to everyone as well. It's always a good thing when we enter that official summer season. Uh, it just feels great to do that. So again, welcome. We are busy preparing for you uh, for our regathering next Sunday morning, the 28th of June. And please refer to my midweek video this past week, if you haven't seen it yet, where we walk you through the building and help you um, kind of have a look-see of what it's going to look like next Sunday when we're able to regather. Uh, and uh, also, this coming Wednesday evening, we're going to do a practice of our live stream uh, in preparation for Sunday morning. So this Wednesday, about 6.15 in the evening, uh, we'll be sending, we'll send a link out ahead of time, but we're just asking you to tune in and to make sure everyone can um, access the live stream as simply as possible. So we'll look forward to that this coming uh, Wednesday evening as well. So again, look at your emails for the details on that. Um, if you would still like to uh, worship from home next Sunday, you're just not quite uh, ready to uh, regather in a larger group, that's okay. Um, the live stream will start around, around 11 a.m. next Sunday morning, and uh, that will be a video you can access throughout the day as well um, next Sunday. So if you choose to worship from home, uh, you'll still be able to see our service online. Uh, our elders have also given us the green light uh, for small group meetings to take place in uh, both of our campuses, either this building in Eugenia or our campus in Flesherton. So if you would like your small group to continue to meet now uh, in those places, um, please contact the church office and we will help facilitate those small group gatherings for you. Again, we'll have to practice uh, the proper social distancing during those meetings, but um, those small groups can go, can go ahead now in, in the buildings themselves. Also, uh, this coming Tuesday at uh, 9 a.m., we're having a, a special one-time work bee out here at the church grounds in Eugenia, um, we're basically wanting to gather some folks together who have the time uh, on Tuesday morning to just get some work done outside and prepare the grounds for our regathering uh, on Sunday. So if you're able to help us out Tuesday morning uh, here at the church, come on out with your rakes and shovels and work gloves and we're going to have a work be together um, again Tuesday morning, this coming Tuesday at 9 a.m. Many thanks to Sue Gowing and Paige Lucas for their hosting of the Ladies Online Social um, yesterday morning, on Saturday morning. And uh, thank you, you two, for hosting that gathering and trust it was a great time together. Well, our call to worship this morning is uh, found in Galatians chapter 5. And uh, let's just let God's word call us to worship this morning. It says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. God's word to us. Let's pray as we come before the Lord. Lord, thank you so much for this day that you have made. Lord, we thank you for our dads and our granddads and, and those who, uh, who are special, uh, those special memories we have of them today. And I pray, Lord, that as we gather together to worship in our homes, uh, Lord, that there will be a, just a strong sense of your presence with us and that uh, you will remind us this morning of the need we all have to keep in step with your Holy Spirit. Pray that you encourage dads today. 
that you will encourage grandfathers today, that you will encourage all of our men in particular as we have this special day set aside uh, to celebrate them. And uh, Lord, we thank you for these moments as we worship. Uh, just speak through the songs, through the prayers, through your, your word a little bit later in the service. And we give you praise and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Joel Dawson's here coming. He's going to lead us from home this morning. Joel, thanks for leading us in song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lift. in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
Let's come before God in prayer this morning. God, we thank you for this time of Father's Day. We thank you that you are a good father. We thank you for the gift of fatherhood. I thank you for my own kids and for my own father. And we just thank you for the gift of families. Um, we just praise you for the ways you've moved. We uh, have this praise report for selling a house, and I just, um, we just praise you for your answered prayers. And um, these, the grief that we're experiencing all over the world, and in these specific ways, and it's touched our, our own church. And we just, we just lift up anyone who's grieving. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be close to those who are grieving and close to those who are struggling right now. We pray for your protection, pray for your continued wisdom as we uh, enter the phase two, and we just uh, lift up this situation with you. We lift up those who are sick, both with this virus and with everything else. We just pray for your healing, pray for your provision. God, we just uh, pray uh, for this next week where we regather once again and both uh, through live stream and in person here we just pray for your protection over this building that we'll be able to meet together and that it will just be an incredible time to lift your name on high to declare your word and to gather as believers in your name and we pray your Holy Spirit pours out both in this building and through the live stream and anyone watching it and even people watching it after through the podcast in different ways. We just pray your word goes out. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for our fathers. We thank you for the gift of fatherhood. And we praise you, our mighty father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today's scripture is taken from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 26, and I'm reading from the New International Version. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. 
Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying one another. The word of the Lord. Well, like Mother's Day, Father's Day during COVID-19 looks a little different uh, around here and around our homes and families, I know. Thankfully, our, our bubbles, as they're called, have doubled in size since Mother's Day, and now groups of 10 uh, can gather. Uh, so that might help your family gathering this weekend if you're having one. But I do love the creativity we've been seeing uh, that families have been employing to make visits happen. It's just a great to see that kind of fun that people are having to squeeze in a visit somehow, whether it's virtually or over the fence or through a window or, or now being able to gather with groups of 10. So that's great. But either way, ha- happy Father's Day once again to all of the dads and granddads out there. And um, I, I love some of the messages that uh, came in that video that we just saw about fatherhood, that uh, fatherhood is uh, it's a privilege, it's an honor, it's a blessing, but it is also the hardest job ever. Uh, I think that's true. It's a privilege, it's an honor, it's a blessing, and it's also the toughest job ever. And uh, I often struggle uh, myself with a sense that I, I could be doing a better job as a, as a dad. I often struggle with those feelings. Um, how am I doing? And, and I could be doing a better job. And it, it's such an important role, I know, um, being a father. Both scripture and science, they both agree concerning the vital role a father plays in the life of a child, and, and I get that. Um, so I'm thankful for a couple uh, realities here. Um, I'm grateful for two realities in the scriptures right off the top of this message. The first is the reality of the calling or the commands and the, the responsibility given to fathers by God. Um, if you read the scriptures, it's clear. There, there is a reality that there is a calling for fathers. And, and there's commands given to fathers. And there's great responsibility given for us by God. Uh, we are to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We're, we're to love our wives. We're to shepherd our children. We're to lead our children if, if God has given you children. And, and so that responsibility, that, that calling is huge, and, and I get that. And that's why I'm also grateful for the second reality there on your screen, the reality of God's grace for us when we fail, that God has grace for dads when they fail. And um, if you feel this morning like you've, you've failed at a dad, you've made, as a dad, you've made mistakes, there is grace for you. And the opportunity to acknowledge um, your failures and ask for forgiveness. Um, God's faithfulness to a parent is great. Uh, God's faithfulness to dads is new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And uh, so God has grace for the parent, for the mother, for the father who acknowledges their mistakes and failures 
and desires to move onward and upward. So I'm grateful for both of these realities that, are, that exist at the very same time. Uh, the reality of both our responsibility as fathers, but also the reality of God's grace when we feel like we've blown it. And I'm grateful for both of those realities. So these days, I'm continuing to dwell on the need um, for the Spirit in our lives, our need to depend on the Holy Spirit. And I'm reflecting on this in these post Uh, Pentecost days, these three weeks now that we've had since Pentecost. And I'm continuing to reflect on the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And uh, so for this morning, I was led to this passage here in Galatians 5 that uh, Jim Dawson read so well for us. Um, Dads, we, we have a tremendous resource in the person of the Holy Spirit. Hear that. Uh, For all of the dads and and grandfathers, all of our men this morning, we have a tremendous resource in the person of the Holy Spirit. And this passage here in Galatians chapter 5, perhaps familiar for many, perhaps not so familiar for some. But this passage clearly deals um, with, with the need for us all to keep in step with God's Spirit. The passage deals very clearly with the contrast between um, life according to our flesh or according to our sinful nature and life lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a very clear and, and quite, quite, um, uh, yeah, quite clear contrast between those two lives, uh, life in the Spirit versus the flesh life. And if you look at Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 16 to 17, um, it becomes really clear. It says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. So it's really simple teaching and really clear here. There's, uh, there's the two ways, life by the flesh or the sinful nature and life uh, by the spirit. And you see there, look at the text there, um, follow along uh, with me. You can see very clearly the, what life according to the sinful nature, looks like. What life according to the flesh uh, looks like. Look at verse 19 to 21. Paul writes here, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. They're obvious, okay? So it's not rocket science. Um, This life is obvious. Uh, Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And Paul writes, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not a pretty picture, is it? This uh, description of life according to our sinful natures, it's not pretty. And this is uh, what our lives look like when we can live according to um, the nature, the sinful nature that is within us. But then Paul contrasts, right, this kind of living. And you see there further down in the text the, um, the life that is produced by the Holy Spirit. And look at verse 22 and 23. But... So after he's listed uh, what the flesh life looks like, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit, and that's important wording, the fruit of the Spirit, so the product of the Spirit, the, what flows from the Spirit in our lives is love, joy, peace, patience, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So very clearly, Paul desires that these two lists be compared. Look at the one list, the sinful nature list, and that's what that life looks like. But then this is what life in the Spirit looks like. And uh, this is life produced by God's Spirit. And it, it, it does not flow naturally from us. It, it actually, um, the sinful nature, those acts flow out of our hearts. Um, but this life, the fruit of the Spirit, comes from Him, from His Spirit. And uh, Paul explains it further. Just look down at verse 24 to 26. He says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature. That's, that's a violent word that he uses. That those in Christ have crucified it. They've, they've put that sinful nature down. They've put it to death with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. So Paul makes it clear that for those who are in Christ, there's, there's, there's something that we have to do, that we need to crucify that sinful nature. We need to resist it, put it down, and we need to live by the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit. Notice the language there. Live by. Keep in step with. There's cooperation. There's, there's, there's a yielding that we as believers need to do um, to live according to the Spirit. And um, that teaching here is pretty, pretty clear you know, for us to understand. And so I continue to be convinced that any lasting change in our own lives or any lasting change in our culture or in our society cannot happen without the Spirit of God really settling into the life of an individual first. This is why the kingdom, this is the way the kingdom of God works. God changes things outwardly by first changing a person inwardly. So uh, companies and organizations and churches as well, they often work on developing what is called their core values. Um, the, core, the core values are, are values that companies, organizations hold up as representative of how they want to operate. And the core values are also the way they would like others to be treated by their organizations, by companies, by churches. And I got to thinking, here in Galatians 5, verse 22, 23, the fruits of the Spirit, these are really our core values. These are the core values for followers of Jesus. And I thought to myself here on Father's Day for our dads, how these core values apply to fatherhood as well, if you think about them. Um, dads and granddads out, out there, all of our men, here, here are, here's the kind of men that the Spirit wants to produce, that the Spirit wants to raise up. Um, men that are loving. Men that are joyful and peaceful and patient and kind and good and faithful and gentle and who can control themselves. Here's a list of core values for the follower of Jesus and in honor of fatherhood today. Aren't these great core values for us as dads? Uh, and now, as I said that, you may say, impossible. <laughs> impossible, you might say. Well, yes, if, if we live according to the sinful nature, these qualities are pretty unreachable. But... If we live according to the Spirit, God's Word says that these qualities, these core values will actually flow out of us. They will flow from our, from our lives and from our hearts. And uh, 
I, I, as a dad, need these qualities every day. And there are times during the day when I can yield to the Spirit and see these things come out of me. And there are times when I live according to the flesh and don't experience these qualities. But uh, I think every father listening to me would probably agree, uh, God, I, I want to be more loving I want to be joyful. I want to be a man of peace and patience. I, I want your kindness, Lord. I need your goodness. I want to be faithful and gentle, and I want to be able to control my desires and, and, and be a self-controlled person. So these are, these are some great um, values for us. Now, some, some believe that love, being the first of the fruits mentioned here, that, that love is, that that's no accident that it's listed first. And some scholars see love as the primary fruit in which the others flow out of. In fact, this, this would seem to resonate with the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, where he wrote, these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. That seems to resonate here with Paul that the greatest of the virtues is love. And I really like how Dr. Walt uh, Larimore, um, in one of his online blogs, puts this. He says, and I love this quote, Paul teaches that love is more than simply one fruit among the many. Rather, love is the first, the primary, the principal fruit of which all the others um, are various manifestations of. And then he goes on to say this, joy, joy is love singing. I like that. Joy is love singing. Peace is love resting. Patience is love enduring. Kindness Kindness is love's self-forgetfulness. Goodness is love's character. Faithfulness is love's habit. Gentleness is love's true touch. And self-control is love holding the reins. I love this quote. I hope it, it speaks to you as well. Just how these other fruits of God's Spirit flow out of love. Joy is love singing. Peace is love resting. Patience is love enduring. Kindness is love's self-forgetfulness. When we can somehow forget ourselves, kindness flows. Goodness is love's character. Faithfulness is love's habit that you could just continue to be faithful to love, and that's the habit of love. Gentleness, love's true touch, and being self-controlled, that's love holding in the reins. What a great, what a fantastic way to think about um, the fruit of God's Spirit. And again, I, I am not always like this as a husband and a father, um, you are not always like this. And that is actually my point this morning. We need to keep in step and live by the Spirit for these fruits to be produced in our lives. We are not like this naturally. We need God's supernatural Spirit um, to, uh, for us to yield to Him. And... Um, we need to father in the Spirit then. We need to learn how to father in the Spirit. Um, father through the person of the Holy Spirit. Father in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a Spirit thing. And uh, I am fully, fully convinced of that. And thankfully, the flesh life that list there of all of the nasty stuff that can come out of our, our sinful natures, our hearts, thankfully, all of those things can be repented of. You can walk away from those things, leave them behind, and by the power of the Spirit, 
um, yield. And that's our role. And I know I've mentioned this to you as a congregation before, but our role is really to yield to the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, some people in our culture need to relearn what the yield sign means. <laughs> There's a lot of roundabouts in our area now, and uh, not everyone understands what a yield sign actually means. That, you know, when you come to those roundabouts, if there's somebody coming, you actually have to stop and, and wait for them to go by, and then you can enter. Uh, there's so many different approaches to those roundabouts, and I'm wondering sometimes if people know how to yield, or that wonderful intersection in Chatsworth at 6 and 10, you know, when you're coming in off of Highway 10 and merging into Highway 6, people don't know what that yield sign means. You actually have to stop and wait for the people to go by you, and then you can enter into traffic. The image is helpful, actually, because sometimes when we're living or, or we're reacting or we're not responding well to life, um, sometimes we have to stop, and we have to just yield to the Spirit and say, Father, I, I need your love right now. I need your patience right now. I need your joy. I, I need self-control. And, and we yield. We actually, um, you know, uh, yield the right of way. You give God's spirit the right of way in your life. And it gets exciting because when, when you see his joy, when you see his patience operating, when, when, when you see love and kindness and goodness and faithfulness flow out of your life, it's exciting because you know it's not you. You know what you're capable of. You know what your nature is capable of. But now it's God's spirit showing you what he is capable of. But it is up to us to yield. And if you don't yield in traffic, you can cause accidents and anger and lots of different responses. And it's the same in the Christian life. We need to yield to God's Spirit, and then we see these fruits um, taking root and growing in our lives. So yield. Let the Holy Spirit, Dad, let the Holy Spirit granddads out there, men of all ages, let the Holy Spirit of God have the right of way in your life. Our final song today is a prayer. And it's a very beautiful hymn called Breathe on Me, Breath of God. One of the lyrics says, Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. It's a wonderful prayer. And I thought as I close this message today that each of us could pray this prayer as we sing it together. Breathe on me, breath of God. Let this be our prayer as we go out together to celebrate. God bless you. Oh,
on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, till all this earth be part of me, close with thy fire divine. on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with Thee the perfect life. Now, as you go into your world, may you love your children, but God loves his children. May you find your identity in being a son of the only perfect father. May you make it possible, make it impossible for your daughters to ever find a husband as good as their dad. May you teach your children that their mother is the most beautiful woman alive. She's really pretty. May you risk more, worry less, and play hard. May you lead your family, not as a king, but as a servant. Who protects their hearts, protects their hearts. May you laugh at the little things, the little things. And finally, and finally, may you lay down your life for your family. And may you introduce them to a God, to a God that's already done that exact thing. We hope that you have a great day today. Great day today. Have a great day today. Happy Father's Day. Happy, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day.